Shada Govinda Madhav ki, Shri Krishna Balaram ki, Shri Goni Thai ki chai. Swagatam, Swagatam, welcome. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Shalakaya Shakshu Militam Yena Tashmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Shetanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam rupam kadamayam dadati Shrapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shah Shri Rupa Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sam Jivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Shah Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabando Jagadpate Gopesh Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchane Gorangi Radhe Vrindavanejvari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Panamami 
Alipriye, Dan Chakal Katarub Yasha, Kripa Sindhu Bhyayeva Cha, Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Namaha, Jai Shri Krishna Shetanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Adreta Gadadha Shiva Sadigur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. There's at least three devotees who will need translation. Okay, so I'll do it both then. Yeah, sure. Please, I beseech your blessings, especially Maharajas, so I can speak some words of worthy. So, Srimad Bhagavatam, the 10th canto, chapter 1, verse 14. Both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vrajan Tishtan Padekena Rajam Tishtan Padekena Iyata Eva, Eva, Ekena, Ekena, Yata Vekena Gachati, Yata Vekena Gachati, Yata, Yata, Shino Jaloka, Shina Jaloka, Yata Trina Jalokevam, Yata Trina Jalokevam, Dehi, Dehi. Karma gatim, karma gatim gataha. gataha, Dehi karma gatim gataha, Dehi karma gatim gataha, Rajam stishtam padekena, Rajam stishtam padekena, Yate vekena gachati, Yate vekena gachati, Yata trina jalokevam, Yata trina jalokevam, Dehi karma gatim gataha, Dehi karma gatim gataha. Rajas tishtam padekena, Rajam tishtam padekena, Yate vekena gachati, Yata trina jalokevam, Yata trina jalokevam, Dehi karma gatim gataha, Dehi karma gatim gataha. Please. <laughs> Dehi Karma Gatim Gataha Dehi Karma Gatim Gataha Matajis Dehi Kama Gatim Gataha Vrajan, a person while traveling on the road. Une personne alors qu'elle voyage sur la route. Tishtan, while standing. Alors qu'elle se tient debout, Padekena, on one foot, sur un pied, Yata, as, comme, Eva, indeed, vraiment, Ekena, by another foot, par un autre pied. 
Gachati goes. Va. Yata as. Kam. China jaloka. A worm on a vegetable. A worm on a vegetable. Un verre sur un légume. Evam. In this way, way. Dehi, de the living entity, l'être vivant, karmagatim, the reactions of fruitive activities, les réactions des activités intéressées, gataha, undergoes, subi, translation. Just as one person traveling on the road rests one foot on the ground and then lifts the other, or as a worm on a vegetable transfers itself to one leaf and then gives up the previous one, the conditioned soul takes shelter of another body and then gives up the one he had before. Tout comme une personne qui voyage sur la route pose un pied au sol et ensuite seulement lève l'autre, tout comme un verre sur un légume se transfère d'une feuille à l'autre et abandonne la précédente, de même, l'âme conditionnée prend refuge d'un autre corps et ensuite abandonne celui qu'elle avait précédemment. Purport This is the process of the soul's transmigration from one body to another. At the time of death, according to his mental condition, the living being is carried by the soul body, consisting of mind, intelligence, and ego, to another gross body. When higher authorities have decided what kind of gross body the living entity will have, he is forced to enter such a body, and thus he automatically gives up his previous body. Dull-minded persons who do not have the intelligence to understand this process of transmigration take for granted that when the gross body is finished, one's life is finished forever. Such persons have no brains with which to understand the process of transmigration. Present mo at the present moment, there is great opposition to the Hare Krishna movement, which is being called the brainwashing movement. But actually, the so-called scientists, philosophers, and other leaders in the Western countries have no brains at all. The Hare Krishna movement is trying to elevate such foolish persons by enlightening their intelligence so that they will take advantage of the human body. Unfortunately, because of gross ignorance, they regard the Hare Krishna movement as a brainwashing movement. They do not know that without God consciousness, one is forced to continue transmigrating from one body to another. Because of their devilish brains, they will next be forced to accept an abominable life and practically never be able to liberate themselves from the conditional life of material existence. How this transmigration of life of the soul takes place is very clearly explained <coughs> In this verse. French? Yeah. Teneur est porté. Ceci est le processus de la transmigration de l'âme d'un corps à un autre. Au moment de la mort, selon sa condition mentale, l'être vivant est transporté par le corps subtil, qui consiste dans le mental, intelligence et ego, à un autre corps grossier. Lorsque des autorités supérieures on ont décidé, ont décidé de quel type de corps grossier l'être vivant devra revêtir. Il se voit forcé alors de rentrer dans un tel type de corps. Et de ce fait, automatiquement, il abandonne son corps précédent. Les gens plutôt stupides n'ont pas l'intelligence pour comprendre ce processus de transmigration. Et ils prennent pour argent comptant que lorsque le corps grossier est fini, la vie s'arrête à jamais. De telles personnes n'ont aucune cervelle 
quoi qu'il en soit, pour leur permettre de comprendre le processus de la transmigration. À l'heure actuelle, il y a une grande opposition à ce mouvement Hare Krishna qui est intitulé comme un mouvement qui lave le cerveau. Mais en fait, les soi-disant savants, philosophes et autres dirigeants de ces pays occidentaux n'ont aucune cervelle, quoi qu'il en soit. Le mouvement Hare Krishna essaye d'élever de telles personnes stupides en les illuminant afin que leur intelligence soit capable de prendre partie de ce corps humain. Malheureusement, du fait de leur ignorance profonde, ils considèrent ce mouvement Hare Krishna comme un mouvement qui lave le cerveau. Ils ne savent pas que sans la conscience de Dieu, on se verra forcé de continuer de transmigrer d'un corps à un autre. Du fait de leur cerveau démoniaque, ils se verront forcés d'accepter une vie abominable et pratiquement parlant, ne seront pas capables de se libérer de la vie conditionnée de l'existence matérielle. Comment ce, la transmigration de l'âme se voit ici expliquée dans ce verset Hare Krishna. So, in regard to this context here, uh, that Vasudev is trying to help his wife. Just imagine the scenario, she's about to be killed. Donc, le contexte est le suivant. Vasudev, qui est, qui vient de se mar qui est en train de se marier, est en train de sauver son épouse, qui est, qui est donc en danger de mort. So, first of all, this is very incumbent upon the husband to protect one's wife. Uh, how many times, please raise your hand, you failed in either disrespecting your wife or you failed in protecting her. Sometimes she may have been humiliated. And one way or the other, as a husband, you didn't fully take action or you didn't fully protect her. Did it ever happen to you? Please raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, so... Le point échéant, c'est qu'on doit absolument protéger, protéger son épouse. Je posais la question à la cantonade, à savoir si parmi vous, parmi nous, parfois a-t-on déjà manqué de respect à son épouse ou a-t-on failli de la protéger lorsqu'elle était, par exemple, humiliée ou en péril Je vois que quelques mains se sont levées. So, it's absolutely essential to intervene. Uh, even if it takes, sometimes it may take violence, you know, let's say someone is disrespecting your wife, even physically molesting her or something. You, you cannot just say, I'm a Hare Krishna, I have to tolerate everything. You have to intervene. Uh, so, c'est très important. Lorsque notre épouse, par exemple, se voit molestée ou humiliée physiquement, on ne peut pas, on peut pas rester les bras ballants et continuer à, à simuler le fait qu'on est un dévot de Krishna, qu'on doit tout tolérer. Il faut absolument prendre action. So here, Vasudev uh, is using different, different diplom diplomatic skills. Uh, there's different... He tries to dissuade comes by the diplomacy. Uh, and he has been using basically two methods. One is sum, and the other is beg. Donc, on voit ici que Vasudev, la tâche est fort difficile. Il doit dissuader Combs de tuer sa femme. Imaginez le tableau, vous êtes confronté à ce scénario. Il va utiliser deux types de diplomatie, un qu'on appelle Sam et l'autre qu'on appelle Bad. What is Sam? Sam, you're trying to pacify the person. So there's five ways to pacify a person. Can you think of any ways? You're trying to pacify someone. 
Of course, the, yes, Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj is right. This is the last extreme. Ad uh, baculum argumentum ad baculum. This is Latin. Means baculum means you start to beat the person. But this is the last extreme. Before that, there's five ways. Relations. Oh, sorry. I'm not battered. Oh, okay, sorry, I misunderstood. Sorry. What did you think I said? I thought you, you said argumentum ad baculum. Batterdom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Flatterdom. Yeah, phrase them. Yeah, oh, sorry, I misunderstood. So there's five ways uh, to try to pacify a person. Relations. Sorry. Bribing. It's not. It's not in the five. It's not in the five systems. <laughs> it's I can get there also. <laughs> Donc il y a cinq façons de pacifier quelqu'un. C'est ce que va faire ici. On appelle ça en sanskrit sam, pacifier quelqu'un. La première façon c'est les relations. We can see here that Vasudev, who is Vasudev compared to Kams? What is the relation? Brother in law. Very good. And Devaki happens to be the, compared to Kams, who is she? Cousin. She's cousin sister. She's not sister, she's actually cousin sister. So, did you notice in the previous verses? Vasudev is using that. We have, you know, we have the same family. And he's going to praise him as a descendant of the Boj dynasty. And comes is from the Boj. Actually, Boj means lower class. And we say Boj. Boj is quite close. Boj means sense gratification. Uh, so that dynasty, according to Srila Prabhupada, is of a lower standard. They are not aristocratic at all, the Boch dynasty. Donc ici, il va faire valoir les relations. Effectivement, ils sont, frères, ils sont beaux frères, l'épouse est la cousine de Kams. Donc il fait valoir, il va donc glorifier, d'ailleurs, outre mesure, il va glorifier Kams. Did it work? Did it work? No, it didn't work. Did it appease Combs? Did it prevent Combs from but to killing his own wife? No, it didn't work. Then he's going to use welfare and fame. He's going to tell him, look, killing a woman on the day of the marriage is extremely ashub. Ashub means inauspicious. What to speak of your reputation? Your reputation is extremely endangered. And Combs was not a fool. He understood. I mean, I'm the uncle. I'm the nephew of the father of the Vaki. If I kill her, there's going to be a fratricidal war. And it's going to be lots of people who are going to die. So, Combs came to that conclusion, it's not worth it. My reputation is finished. So, this is another way of pacifying someone. You use welfare and fame. Okay? Donc, un autre élément de pacification, c'est par exemple, utiliser la gloire de la personne. Il faut lui faire valoir que si elle s'adonne à un tel acte criminel, elle va ruiner, bousiller sa réputation. Did it work? Not completely. Not completely. <laughs> he got somewhat impacted by this, but not to the extent that he was going to refrain from killing her. So then Vasudev carried on. Then he used identity. Identity. Again, it's kind of, I mean, all these five concerns are kind of overlapping each other. Surit, my, my dear comes. she's your Surit. She's very dear to you. Surit means Suridam Savabhutanam. You know the verse. Surit means she's very dear to your heart. She's your cousin sister. Donc il va faire valoir l'identité. Hein, l'identité, 
C'est ta sœur, c'est ta cousine, solide, elle est très chère à ton cœur. Ce n'est pas, pas du tout euh, de bon augure. Et puis bien sûr, it works sometimes, you glorify the person. Hein? Vous glorifiez la personne qui vous en veut. Uh, you over-glorify the person. This is what it did here, actually. He over-glorified comes. His qualifications. You're such a great, such a great king. I mean, come on. He imprisoned his father. He, I mean, he performed so many atrocities. Actually, who is comes? Very interesting, this personage. Who is comes? Let's try to backtrack a little bit. Who is comes? Qui est comes? Ce personnage, very good match. So uh, let's backtrack. Hirena Keshipu he had grandsons, six grandsons, and they kind of gave up on him. They took shelter of Brahma, and when Hirena Keshipu found out about it, he was quite displeased. He told them, you, you gave up my company, you, you just, you know, dispelled me, you just ignore me. You will be killed by your father. Can you imagine? He cursed them. <laughs> What kind of grandfather is this? He cursed his grandsons to be killed by their father. And true enough, what happened, Kalanimi took birth as comes. And he killed the Garbasu. And you know the first six sons of Devaki were Garbasu. They were previously the sons of Kalanimi. And they took birth as sons of Devaki. And they were killed by comes, who happened to be previously their father. So you can see how sarcastic is karma. Hein, donc, c'est assez hallucinant comme histoire, mais c'est la vérité. C'est écrit dans Harivanj que Irania Kachipu avait des petits-enfants qui, de manière ou d'une autre, ont rejeté Irania Kachipu, qui se sont mis à adorer Brahma, comme lui d'ailleurs. Et Irania Kachipu l'a très très mal pris. Et donc, Irania Kachipu a maudit ses petits-enfants. Il leur a dit, je vous maudis à être tué dans une vie prochaine par votre père. Imaginez. Donc ce qui s'est passé, c'est que Kalanemi a repris naissance comme Kams, et les enfants qu'il a tués, les six premiers enfants d'Evaki, sont les Garbassours. Vous vous souvenez, les Garbassours Et ces enfants étaient nul autre que les fils de Kalanemi dans leur vie précédente. Et ils ont été tués par Kams, qui était précédemment Kalanemi. And also, so some is pacifying someone. There's five concerns we discussed. And bed. Bed means presentation of fear. Uh, so you can see that Vasudev has used also bed. Bed means he told, he told comes. Just imagine the consequences of your heinous act if you kill your cousin sister in this life and the next. Did it work? Not so much. <laughs> so diplomacy works with a civilized person. With uncivilized person, uh, oftentimes the last extreme is argumentum ad baculum, means you beat the person. Did Vasudev do that? Did he beat comes? Why? He could have done it, he should have done it, but why did it, didn't he beat him up? Yeah, and on top of that, Vasudev, Kams is much more powerful than Vasudev. In terms of, Kams was an extreme, extreme uh, strength. He could lift up a mountain. Extreme strength. That is why when Krishna says in the Gita, Vinashayat Shadush Kritam, he has to come himself to kill certain asuras like Shishupal, Kams, Jarasan, because no one else could. They're so powerful. Dantavakra, yeah, Dantavakra was his brother of Shishupal. Donc, on peut voir que chez un être 
démoniaque. Ces arguments qu'on vient de dire, Sam, Bed, pacifie, pacifier quelqu'un, ça ne marche pas chez un être qui n'est pas sophistiqué. Ça ne marche pas. En général, le dernier extrême, c'est argumentum ad baculum, taper la personne. Mais là, Vasudev ne l'a pas fait. Pourquoi Parce que quand même, c'est beaucoup plus fort que lui. Beaucoup plus fort. So finally, Krishna inspired him. What did he do? What is the... How did it convince him? What is the argument that convinced him? Yeah. Exactly. So this is the importance to be honest because even if, if you are honest, you will be praised by even demonic persons. And you can see the Goswamis, uh, they were praised by both the ruffians and the devotees. Because even the, the, the ruffians will say, yes, he, he keeps his word, so if he says that, I'm going to listen to him. They know. Deep inside, they are spirit souls. So they know. He's telling the truth, and he's going to stick to the truth. So yes, I will go by his advice. So it worked. Donc ce qui s'est passé, c'est que la la, le, dernier, le dernier argument, c'est de lui avoir dit « Je te promets que les enfants qui naîtront de notre union, je te les confierai, tu pourras en faire ce que tu veux. » Et on va voir par la suite que Kham sera même touché par ça. Vous vous souvenez Il va épargner les enfants. C'est seulement parce que Narad va lui dire « Don't take a chance. Hein, » Mais en fait, euh, Kham va apprécier l'argument et va accepter de ne pas, pas tuer sa, sa cousine. Ok, so the other part of the purport is 40 eh, today. So we are dealing with Deantara 40. Alors on parle de la transmigration de l'âme, la métampsychose. And we know according to Yam Yam Vapis Malam Bavam Tiajatante Kalevalam. According to the makeup of a mental method at the time of death, that's going to determine our next destination. Donc, on le sait, 8-6, Krishna le dit, ce sont les pensées au moment de mourir qui déterminent la destination future. D'où l'intérêt et l'urgence de façonner, de façonner son mental de manière à ne pas, ne pas avoir le risque que le mental, au dernier moment, Ailleurs. So we have, we should, we should, we have to train the brain and train the mind mostly to think of Krishna. Tasmat kani pu payena mani Krishna niveshayat. We should always, one way or the other, <laughs> now that is telling, one way or the other, we should train the mind to remember Krishna, even inimically. That's not the best, of course. We should anukul bhakti. We should. Definitely think of Krishna favorably. But for the sake of argument, even inimically, uh, you have seen Kams, he was thinking of Krishna out of fear, and he got some benefit. He got some benefit. Donc, l'idée c'est de préparer, pratiquer ce souvenir de Krishna constamment, parce que sinon, au moment de la mort, le mental au dernier moment peut toujours se défier. Donc, toujours se rappeler de Krishna, et le verset dit même, « Tasmat kanepiu manena mane Krishna nevechayet » que même, l'idéal, bien sûr, l'idéal, c'est favorablement se rappeler de Krishna, comme un dévot de Krishna, mais même défavorablement, comme Kams, par exemple, qui était vraiment mu par la peur. Kams était mort de peur, jour et nuit. Il se regardait dans le miroir, il se regardait dans le miroir, il ne voyait pas son visage. Sa vie était tellement infortunée qu'il ne pouvait pas voir son visage, son visage dans le miroir. Il avait peur constamment de Krishna. Donc ceci lui a donné quand même un bénéfice. Il a eu une, une certaine forme de libération grâce à cette peur de Krishna. So here we are dealing with the transmigration. So the example is given in the Gita, 518, 
शरीरम यद वपनुति यच्छाप्युत कमति ज्वरा गृहिवे तनि सम्यति वयु गंधम इवशयात we know that the air carries aromas so in the same way we carry a certain conception of life in our subtle body we entertain that and that's going to determine what kind of body we're going to have to take on next time donc imaginez à quel point c'est scientifique ce verset explique 15:8 que tout comme l'air transporte les odeurs nous transportons nous cultivons dans notre vie certaines conceptions de l'existence ce sont ces conceptions qui vont déterminer le type de corps brut ou grossier qu'on va revêtir dans la vie prochaine just imagine uh, the body that you have now is the result of the mental body that you entertain in your previous life Follow? and now what you entertain what you cultivate mentally presently in your life that will determine your next life your next growth body you are sculpting like a sculpture you're chipping away at a rough block of granite or whatever uh, with your mental body you are chipping away chiseling out a certain shape in that form of granite and that mental frame that you're working on now will go and lodge itself in the next growth body c'est comme un sculpteur qui façonne sa pierre à coup de petits burins et autres, il, se, il va façonner un, une sculpture. Et donc, lorsqu'il a le produit est fini, ce, ce frame, ce, ce corps mental va aller se loger dans le prochain type de corps que vous allez obtenir grâce à une mère ou à une femelle quelque part dans la création. So you can see how serious and, and stringent is the the entire plateau the transmigration of the soul so and of course we could say well who's this who decides this because this is a christian argument she the prophet when he was a boy in that scottish church college there was one teacher i think he was a scottish teacher and he used to always make fun of the row of karma on this predicate on this note he used to say my dear boys you, i know you are fond of this row of karma but where is the witness how can you remember who remembers each and every one's living entity's previous karma tell me how does it work so because of that you know the boys were kind of put down including Shira Prabhupada Abai Charan the small Abai Charan and little did he know this professor that actually Kamana Devane Trena Dehu Janto Papa Taye you know the verse Lord Kapil is telling his mother Devauti Kamana Devane Trena the supreme lord see Dehu Jantu de upapataye jantu means fetus so you know pumsa reta kanashraya ha in other words the particle of semen is going to go strio uh, strio udaram is going to go into the womb of a female lady could be an animal in, in the animal kingdom which which have the case whatever the case this arrangement of being of placing a jiva into a particular family this is orchestrated by higher authorities uh, and that's prophet said i should have said i should have told that to the <laughs> prophet in those days but of course you know, it was very wrong this is how the christian they used to really ridiculed 
the law of karma. Donc, oui, je n'ai pas traduit. Donc, l'idée hein, de ce verset 3.31.1, c'est un verset de Kapil, qui parle, il parle, il parle à sa mère. Kamana devanetrena deho, jantu deho papataye. Le fœtus est placé dans une matrice hein, de femme, de femelle, si c'est le monde animal. À travers quel moyen Pumso reta kanashayaha. La particule de semence va aller dans l'ovule et donc va féconder l'épouse ou, ou la femelle, peu importe. Mais ce, ce, comment dirais-je, cette jonction, ce, cette opération se fait sous l'égide d'autorité supérieure. Et c'est là que les chrétiens se fourvoient lamentablement, parce que, d'ailleurs, on le sait, lorsque Abbaï était petit dans son école écossaise chrétienne, il y avait un professeur qui se moquait des enfants, souvent, en disant... Mes chers enfants, cette, cette loi du karma indienne que vous mettez toujours en avant ne tient pas la route, puisque quel est le témoin Quel est le témoin des actes de tout un chacun dans la création Chaque fille, qui est, le, qui est le témoin Qui est le témoin 13.23 explique bien, Krishna explique en 13.23 que je suis le consentant, le témoin, celui qui supervise. Donc voilà, on ne peut pas échapper. C'est sous l'égide d'autorité supérieure. Donc, alors bien sûr, je suis la propade. Well, let's shift to English now. We have, obviously, je la propade has written this canto. It must have been in the 70s. Remember the state of affairs of this kind in those days in America, <laughs> brainwashing, uh, brainwashing. Uh, it was a state of, it was a, a, reality, a reality, reality at the time. I guess Maharaj can testify because you are the only ones who were, who were there at the time. Uh, from what I heard, devotees were adopted, abducted even, uh, ladies or devotees alike. Deep programmers. Deep thank you Maharaj. So, The, and I, from what I remember, I mean, I was not there, but I read, correct me if I'm wrong, Maharaj, that Prabhupada told him, you go to the court and you bring the books, the Bhagavatam, and you, on the, on the basis of the books, you ascertain that this is sound philosophy, this is absolute philosophy. And on that basis only, you prove to the judge that we are a bona fide religion. And true enough, this is what happened. I guess in the 70s, uh, Hare Krishna movement became established as a bona fide religion, and they were allowed to even distribute books in the airport and so on. Is that correct? More or less. I mean, in the States, at least. In the States. In the States, was the most intense. Yeah. Were you annoyed, annoyed with that in UK? Pardon? Were you annoyed in UK by We this? Had some programming in the UK, but nothing on the extent of America. It never went to that extent. Okay. Because some divorces were taken away by. They weren't very popular in the in UK with the programming. Oh, okay. Okay. Donc, yeah. Yeah, course, yeah. Donc là, bien sûr, dans ce verset d'aujourd'hui, on parle de lavage de cerveau. Quand j'ai joint, c'était encore un petit peu la tendance, mais c'était la fin de ça. Dans les années 70, il y a eu ce tapage où les médias et surtout les autres religions les leaders politiques aussi, nous, nous taxaient de laveurs de cerveau. Et 
Tant et si bien qu'aux États-Unis, ça a fait un sacré, un sacré bins parce que il euh, y avait des, des, des programmeurs qui, des fois, kidnappaient les dévots ou les dévotes. Des fois, ces des programmeurs étaient, étaient carrément euh, hired, hein, they were, comment on dit, ils étaient embauchés par les, les parents des, des dévots. <rire> wow, torture. In your... Wow, I didn't know that. Oui, donc la Maharaj nous rapporte qu'en en fait, ils étaient torturés. Maharaj rajoute que certains des sont encore vivants et ils ont vécu cette expérience d'avoir été torturé à cette époque-là. Finalement, l'idée, c'était de les dissuader de continuer euh, la pratique, mais ils ne sont jamais arrivés. Ils ne sont jamais arrivés. Le Senator. In Russia, they said, they, they said that. Much. Donc, Maharaj rajoute que. <laughs> Il comparait le mouvement Arkeshna à de la peste. Et les politiciens l'avaient dit aux États-Unis si ça continue comme ça, le mouvement Arkeshna est parti pour prendre la relève du, du pays. When was that released? Maybe 90s, early this century, something like that. I don't know. They don't realize the spreading of Krishna consciousness is not just a fanatical bunch running on the street banging drums, but it's spreading in many, many ways. In the heart, a transformation of heart. Yeah, they can't see that part, they can only see the external side. Yeah, true. But still, there's a point there that they, they didn't see, they don't feel that, that, that we're preaching, you know, Blunt. Yeah, but is that true? Is there some truth to it? Yeah, true. So perhaps we blended we blended in too much then. Especially in the form of Indianization. Should I translate, Mara? Yeah. Should I translate? <laughs> Donc, Mara, je rajoutais beaucoup de points que 
dans les années 90, au début, ces mêmes des programmeurs ont avoué que finalement, on n'a plus à se soucier du mouvement Hare Krishna, on n'est plus menacé par eux parce que ils sont devenus totalement indolores. Ils, sont, ils ont plus ou moins, ils se sont fondus plus ou moins dans la société actuelle. Donc on n'a plus vraiment besoin de s'en soucier ni de s'en méfier. Donc Maraj rajoute que il y a toujours une vérité quelque part. Il n'y a jamais de fumée sans feu. Donc si c'est le mot d'ordre de la société actuelle envers le mouvement Hare Krishna aujourd'hui, ça veut dire qu'il y a un, un temps soit peu de vérité dans ceci. Donc Maraj rajoute, et je pense que je suis d'accord avec lui aussi, il dit que quelque part, c'est aussi très mauvais de compromettre tellement le mouvement Hare Krishna, surtout sa philosophie, au point de se fondre dans la société humaine. Si on commence à faire, si on commence à être apprécié des matérialistes, ça veut dire que quelque part, peut-être qu'on joue trop leur jeu. Et Maharaj dit que pour lui, c'est un fait aujourd'hui, Iskon s'est trop compromis dans ses tenants et aboutissants. C'est un bon point que je partage aussi. Ça peut se voir sous la forme de l'indianisation d'Iskon hein, ou la mondialisation, je ne sais pas comment vous voulez appeler ça. La commercialisation d'Iskon aussi. Voilà, ça, c'est... That was way back in the 80s. Yeah, that's what it, you know, the words were. Blunt. Actually, this is. Yeah, yeah. Fearless. Fearless. Oh, okay. Well, you may have on TV. Wow, live. Many other things. Donc, Maraj rapporte que, bon, c'est vieux, c'est au début des années 80, et donc, les, les dévots étaient très euh, confrontationnels, hein, bruts, un peu dans leur approche. Et ils étaient, il, a, il avait été invité, Bhavananda Maraj à l'époque, encore Maraj. C'était un, un, un TV show, c'était un spectacle de télé, et c'était un petit peu, vous savez, c'est, c'est spectacle où on vous met sur la, sur la touche, enfin, pas sur la touche, vous êtes sur la sellette, on vous bombarde de questions, des questions un peu challenging, un peu défiantes. Et là, euh, la, le, le journaliste, il dit à Bhavanand Maharaj, à l'époque, il lui dit, euh, mais il est, il est clair que on, souvent on dit que vous, vous, vous lavez le cerveau des gens. Propat, euh, pardon, Bhavanand tout de suite répond qu'effectivement, parce que vous avez le cerveau très très sale, donc on le nettoie. Et ça a très bien passé. L'Australie, d'après Marage, est un pays très euh, open, hein, tout à fait euh, avant-garde. Et c'est bien passé. Donc le point de Marage, c'est qu'on n'a pas besoin de diluer la philosophie. On dit en, on dit en, en sanskrit, « What is it, Marage ?»« Satyam Bruyan Priyam Bruyat ». Uh, we should, as far as possible, Satyam Bryan Priyam Bryat, we should preach palatably, but we should never diffuse the philosophy in the name of speaking palatably. You follow? On, do, on doit, c'est vrai, Satyam Bryat Priyam Bryat, on doit toujours, si possible, parler de manière savoureuse, c'est quelque chose de savoureux à entendre, 
Mais attention, pas au point de diluer le sidant. Et si par contre, on ne peut pas le faire autrement que de le dire brutalement, il faut le dire brutalement. On commence par dire les choses de manière savoureuse. <rire> Mais si on ne peut pas faire autrement, il faut quand même le dire. There was an example, a mean, very recent example. 12, 10 years ago, in the Damaras, when I organized the uh, Harinam in La Rochelle. You came to that one? No, not with uh, the Maharaj. Yeah, it, in uh, summer 12, 2012. So what I did is, um, back to Churu Maharaj, very often he used to organize retreats and cruises. Like, you know, big boat and, and the boat will just keep on bouncing off the coastline, you know, all over Europe and stopping in different harbors and ports here. So he, Maharaj told me, please organize a Harinam in La Rochelle, 2012. So I organized, I went there, I went to see the city hall, and I told them, look, we're going to have some Indian dancing groups coming, you know. Colorful Indian boys and girls coming from India. We're going to entertain the city. A lot of colors, a lot, a lot of flags, a lot of music. And they liked it. They said, wow, great. This is amazing. Yeah, please come. So I got the, the seal. I got all the certification and the, the permits and all these things. So when came the day, Months later, actually, I had anticipated quite a few months before. So on the D-Day, I mean, they disembarking from the boat, talking about 250 devotees, <laughs> Radhanath Maharaj, Bhakti Chura Maharaj, Sachinol Maharaj, others. And in full regalia, in, in, in Dhoti, Kuta, Sari. And then they, they had given me a very small trajectory, you know. You, you, we studied with the city hall, they told me you go here, you go here. You. So I say yes, okay. In 10 minutes we covered the ground. So I say, and then the Maharaj was looking at me, I say, and I had put them around the city, all the coastline, inside, all the inners, inner roads inside, and, and all the trees, all the singing, waving. So I took it upon me. Next day, in the newspaper, <clears throat> the Hare Krishna took over the city yesterday, and they had a permit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Then, so some devotees were totally appreciative, and some, not a few, but a few, not a lot, but a few. You know, so, I mean, just imagine, let's backtrack now. If I went to the city hall of La Rochelle, say, look, the Hare Krishna is coming in, uh, in August, uh, such day, or July, okay. what do you think they would have said? Huh? Well, sorry? Get lost. So, personally, Enter like a needle, come out like a plow. And it was a big success. All the swamis were in bliss. And all the devotees were in bliss. We chanted, we distributed prashad, we distributed books. So, you know, sometimes you have to use your, your brain in a Krishna conscious way. And what did we do wrong? We chanted Hare Krishna. We entertained the people, people were in bliss from one to, I mean, there were tourists visiting the city. It's a very touristic city. They were quite in, fa quite in favor of them in bliss. And funny. In Paris, what happened when you were doing Maharaj and his party thing? You were there? Yes, I was there. Yes, I was there. Yeah, we were stopped by the uh, police okay. in front of the, because we did our uh, Hainam in. Parvis de Notre Dame, and that's right, we're in front of the prefecture, the police. A provocation, là. 
Did you get Did you get kicked out? Yeah, but then they were following us up until Saint Michel, like a whole squad, and then they told us, "Okay, so, uh, we've got orders that you have to dismiss and just stop it." And they stayed until uh, the very last devotee left the place. Oh, I see. Yeah. But that was after an hour or two, right? Yeah, we managed to do one and a half hour, something like that. We we managed to go to Luxembourg, come back, and, and at the end we went to to Saint Michel, Notre Dame, and then from there they started to bring us. And I think us. the party was so big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they don't. Know. When it's like a hundred, hundred and fifty to go with, you would bear that in mind too, both sides. Big sound system, jambes, mridangas, like <laughs> It looks like there's a curse here in the purport. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Because of their devilish brains, they will, they will next be forced to accept an abominable life and practically never be able to liberate themselves. Seems to me Prabhupada is kind of cursing. Well, they can't be liberated. Them. They can't liberate themselves. That's for sure. Yeah. But by the mercy of the Vaishnavas, yeah. yeah. you were saying just now, Prabhupada talked on this subject matter of dirty brains many times. Yeah. Uh, so, pointed to his Balanada point, but the same thing he's mentioning is that that's our business is to change their devilish. Exactly. Brains. Exactly. Yeah. We should not dilute. I fully agree. Shila Prabhupada ki. Shimad Bhagavatam ki. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't make it a big institution, he said also. Uh, don't make a uh, repetition of uh, Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. I would say the Indianization is quite, quite strong also. Well, it is. Depends how you look at Indianization. Hare Krishna. That's true. That's also true. Yeah. Yeah.